Hello and welcome, I'm your code monkey. Here's an article entitled Sales Comps for Your Game, How Not to Do It, Also How to Do It Better. So sales comps or sales comparisons, this is definitely a very interesting topic. If you're trying to make in-game development as a profession instead of just a hobby, this is probably one of the first few things that you're going to do. And importantly, most people actually start off by doing it quite wrong. So for example, some people look at Call of Duty and they're like, okay, Call of Duty sold 30 million copies. Surely if I make my own indie first person shooter, surely I can sell at least a million copies. Obviously, that sounds absurd when I say it out loud, but a lot of people do think like that in some more less extreme ways. So let's read a bit more about this topic. Do you want to get more wishlists and more sales? If so, then you need to learn all about marketing. It's absolutely essential nowadays. You need to learn the best practices and how to stand out. One place where I've learned a lot myself has been from Chris Zukowski. I've been reading the newsletter for many years now. Learning marketing is definitely one of the most valuable skills you can get. The difference between not knowing marketing and putting this knowledge into practice is pretty much going to be the difference between selling just a dozen copies versus selling thousands. So marketing is definitely a super valuable skill that you should spend either some time or some money in order to learn. And right now, Chris is running a sale on his courses. This is really awesome for condensing a ton of information in a single course. The links to the course include a special discount and they are affiliate links, which means you get an awesome deal and some super valuable knowledge while I get a nice commission. So check it out with the link in the description. So over here it says, I remember when this was on fields, you know, the internet, all we had was IRC, FTP, and a little bit of Telnet. Now you've got your Twitches and your TikToks, and now we have to worry about whether people notice the stuff we make too. And right away, this is actually a very interesting sentiment. Basically, it's the fact how in indie game development especially, things move so quickly that if you read some advice from five years ago, chances are a lot of it might not apply nowadays. The way you did game marketing back when there was just IRC and FTP, that was very different from nowadays where you got Twitch and TikTok. So if you want to learn indie game marketing, this is something you have to keep up to date pretty much all the time. This imaginary comment is courtesy of someone who doesn't grok that the internet's reach has multiplied near infinitely. Your games can now reach billions of people online instead of 12 sweaty nerds in a university computer lab back in 1993. So let's get on and work out how exactly to do that. This goes back to the original thing that I mentioned. There are so many millions and millions of people playing games. Steam has something like 150 million monthly active users. That's an insane amount, so again, you might think to yourself, okay, if I make an indie game, what is the difficulty of me being able to sell to just 0.1% of that? If I just sell to 0.1% of 150 million, that would be an insane amount, that would be more than enough to make my game viable. But while that number sounds very achievable, very small, in reality, it is actually very difficult to achieve. Sales comps in estimating reach for your games. So discovery is a vital point, making sure your game gets out there and is a success, but in order to budget your game correctly, you may also need to estimate how many new units you think it's going to sell. And if you don't do this, then a publisher definitely will. So if you are trying to make games professionally, make this as your job. If so, then this is absolutely a question you need to answer. Every time you come up with some kind of game idea and you're validating whether that idea is going to be potentially successful or not, every time you do that, you definitely need to do this. You need to do some analysis in order to figure out is this genre, is this idea even possible or not? There are some things that even if you come up with a great game, the market for that idea might be way too niche to the point where it's not even worth it. Or maybe it might be worth it, but it might be a lot more difficult to sell the number of copies that you need to sell. So which brings up the interesting quandary, how should developers think about estimating possible ROI on a game, whether self-funding or not, and how should publishers slash funders think about it, some framing thoughts. So the first obvious point is that publishers have a portfolio of games to manage risk. This is another very interesting point between the quite big difference between a indie game publisher and a indie game developer. For a publisher, if they publish multiple games, they don't necessarily need all of those games to be hits. They can have a few games that are flops as long as the other ones are actual hits. In the end, they won't be all right. But if you are a indie game developer, if your game is the only thing you have, the only thing that is going to make some money for the next five years or something, if so, then yeah, you definitely have different questions you need to ask yourself as opposed to a publisher who can help mitigate risk by diversifying their portfolio of games. And in today's market, I believe they should be expecting a minority of their games to be on larger hits and help fund the others. So this changes their risk profile. They're looking for the 20% of games that can break out, but they still need to pick realistic comparables. On the other hand, if you're a dev pitching a publisher or funder, it's in your best interest to be fairly optimistic with the comps. The funder can ignore those or not. Though don't look naively over optimistic devs, but you should come in framing a significant possible upside and let the funder produce their own take. Now for me personally, I've never published a game. All of my games have been self-published, so I've never used a publisher. So it's always interesting to read about how things work in that world, in the world of trying to pitch to a publisher in order to get some funding. And apparently the goal is to be fairly optimistic, although not delusionally optimistic. Then if you're a dev that is putting down your own money and you need ROI to self-fund your game, then you need to have a much more conservative risk profile. Or at least a plan B, contract work, taking another gig, etc. If the game doesn't return as you expect. 
So even like I said, if you are self-funding your game, you definitely need to be very aware of the risk profile of how much are you risking with that game. Something that always breaks my heart is when I see some posts on Twitter or something of someone saying that they spent five years working on a game and comes out and just sells a hundred copies. That always hurts to see, but suddenly that is a reality. This is a very competitive business. So if you are trying to make this your job, definitely make sure you have at least some kind of plan B. And when estimating sales, definitely don't assume your game is going to be a mega hit. Like for example, if you're trying to build an auto battler game, the recent hit that just came out is Backpack Battles. It's got almost 2000 reviews in just a few weeks. So if you were to make an auto battle, you should not compare yourself to this. Instead, you should scroll down and look at all the releases. And if you do, then you can look at the more normal games, quote unquote, and you can start to get a better idea of what exactly this genre provides, how many sales the average game on this genre can do. So continuing traditional methods of working out possible revenue for games often start by looking at key games in that genre or subgenre. And there's a super helpful new market study Google sheet. It links to this Google sheet, which actually has a ton of information. Apparently you can just save this and write your own in order to do some kind of market study. So if you'd like to do this, this looks like a great starting point. So if you're making a 2D Metroidvania, go to Steam's 2D Metroidvania category page, enter some of the top selling games as comps, write down the median revenue numbers, and that's how much money your game will make. So is that right? Nope, that is definitely what you should not do. So one of the tips is to be realistic, try to pick recent games in that subgenre. This is probably one of the best tips because, again, like I said, the indie game market moves very quickly, very fast. And if you look at very old titles, chances are you're only going to see the very successful ones, and those have had a ton of years to gather a ton of sales. So if you use those for comparisons, those are probably going to be way over what you could possibly realistically get. So the second one is the top evergreen comps can be much updated games that date from an area of much less competition. So one good example of that is Terraria. This one came out in 2011, and it has literally a million reviews. So this is definitely a mega hit. But do you think that if you launch a game just like Terraria nowadays, would that sell the same amount of copies? The answer is definitely not. Again, nowadays is a very different world from 2011. The competition is much more fierce, and even games like Terraria, they are still getting updates, so still getting some players. And the last tip is if you are a dev pitching to publishers, still play up the top selling comps. If we instead we look at 2D crafting exploration games, now we can look and get a bit more of a realistic comparison of what exactly might be done in this kind of genre. And also in terms of math, how do you actually calculate sales estimates based on just looking at a Steam page? The answer to that is based on the review count. Using a multiplier for the review count is one of the best ways you have of guessing how many sales the game had based on the reviews. And actually going back into that doc that I showed a while ago, over here you can see how that count, that number, that multiplier, that one has changed based on the years. So if you are calculating the number of sales for a game from 10 years ago, that is going to be very different math from a game that just came out. So for example, for my own game, Dingy Gardens, we can guess, for example, 77 times 40, and we get a rough estimate of about 3,000 copies sold. And with the game being 15 bucks and about six months old, for that, let's estimate something like 10 bucks per copy. So multiply this by 10 bucks, and we get a very rough estimate of about $30,000 in gross revenue. Now this is my own game, so I can just show you the exact stats. So the total number of copies sold is actually close to 2,000, and the total gross revenue is about 27K. So as you can see, this is just a rough estimate, but it's definitely not off by about a factor of two. So in order to do some proper sales comps, you would go onto Steam and search for games with the same tags as whatever game you're currently making, then start from new releases and look back for maybe about a year. Do that and go through a bunch of these games and try to figure out what games look similar to what you think you can produce, or what you think your game currently looks like. Now obviously, at this point, it is very important to be very honest with yourself. For example, in my case, for making Dinky Gardens, which is a sort of automation game, I can be pretty honest with myself and see that nope, it does not compare anywhere close to what, for example, Dyson Sphere program looks like. So be very honest with yourself with what exactly you can build with the resource you have available. Then come up with a list of about 10 games that are somewhat similar to yours. Similar, I mean, in terms of hook, in terms of complexity, in terms of production value. So something like that, then look at all their reviews and do that kind of math in order to figure out how much money might your game make. Again, importantly, make sure you do realistic comparisons. Don't compare yourself to the top 1% of whatever genre you're working on. So when it comes to making sales comparisons for your game, definitely make sure you do it realistically. And if you do and you find a particular hook, a particular niche that both you would like to make and has potential viability, if so, then that is probably going to be a much better bet as opposed to just making the first thing that comes to your head and just hoping for the best. And if you want to find more success with your games, check out the link in the description to learn from a Steam marketing expert.